We're really excited to share some of the insights about what will be the newest school joining the Basis International Schools Network. My name is Tim Smith, and I'll be hosting the event, and we'll be touching on a, a few things with a couple of our uh, panelists. Um, some of the key things we'll be touching on is some insights about Basis International Schools. We'll get into some of the details of the particular school in Chengdu, Basis International and Bilingual School, Chengdu. Um, Dr. Ryan Kelly will share some of the insights about the school there. We'll touch on insights about the compensation package, the expat package that we do have, and then we'll have uh, kind of a Q&A session. So a couple of things to be aware of as we conduct the webinar is um, all the participants um, are in listen-only mode. If you do have questions at the bottom of your Zoom, uh, you should see a Q&A uh, button. Go ahead and click the Q&A button, type in your question. We'll be answering questions at the end of the webinar and I'm happy to answer anything that does come up that you might have. And we'll also provide additional information on how to apply to positions, how to get in touch with us, as well as how to uh, follow some of our social channels so you can stay up to date on um, all the developments of uh, this particular school, as well as the other schools within the Basis International Schools Network. So again, thanks for joining us today. We're excited to... Uh, uh, have you here with us. Um, so again, my name is Tim Smith. I'm the Vice President of Global Talent Strategy for the Basis International Schools. We also have Dr. Ryan Kelly joining us. Uh, he's the founding head of school for Basis International Bilingual School in Chengdu. I'm also joined with uh, my colleague, Michael Holtquist, who is the international recruited individual that is working particularly with the school in Chengdu. And uh, be in touch with uh, some of those that are interested in the opportunities of this particular school. So in terms of talking about Basis International Schools, uh, Basis International Schools are part of the Basis Curriculum Schools Network. It's a network of schools that have the Basis Curriculum, which is a, a, a curriculum that is known for its, um, it's an accelerated curriculum, it's rigorous, but really has the building blocks to establish some great outcomes. We do have six independent schools in the United States, and then we also have nine international and bilingual schools in Asia. We do have eight in China and one in Bangkok, Thailand. In terms of the curriculum in and of itself, one of the things that we're focused on is really preparing students at the highest international levels to be participants in the future uh, careers and education. Um, we segment some of the curriculum into, you know, the early part where we're really establishing that love of learning, really, you know, the, the getting the students uh, enthusiastic about learning new things as they progress. As we get into more of the middle school grades, it's developing the academic mindset, helping them to understand and have critical thinking skills, creative problem solving abilities. And then as they move into the high school grades, it's really preparing them for a university education. Um, most of the courses that we do conduct at the high school level are on par with courses that you would see at the university. And, um, and so again, the curriculum is, um, it's rigorous, it's accelerated, but um, we really do see the, the students very well prepared for, um, for university. In terms of what the, uh, the outcomes are, you can see in, uh, with the graduates that we have had, 77% um, of the graduates across our network are accepted into the top 30 universities. And 96.5% uh, are accepted in the top 50 universities. Some of those uh, university acceptances include schools like Boston University, Cornell, Duke, Imperial College of London, MIT, Oxford, UCLA, uh, and some of the top um, arts and design schools uh, with, within the United States and internationally as well. So in considering an opportunity with the Basis International Schools and looking into what is unique and what is different, as I've had conversations with many of the teachers in our network, one of the things they talk about is the opportunity to work with really exceptional teachers. One of the things that we see and that we do look for is we look for those teachers who have deep subject expertise, are very passionate about teaching, passionate about their discipline, and we work in a very collaborative environment. And um, that's one thing they talk about is just working with exceptional colleagues. Number two is the academic culture. Um, we really do focus on having high expectations, not just high expectations for our students, but certainly for ourselves. It encourages rigor, achievement, and it really develops that collegial uh, environment as we prepare students for their future academic and, and uh, career endeavors. 
One of the other things that's unique is being a part of the basis network. Um, very highly respected, uh, well-regarded uh, international group of schools. Um, what this does is it creates great career opportunities. So as we continue to grow, we add schools, it gives individuals an opportunity to take on new responsibilities, new roles, uh, new functions, um, also to be able to transfer to new locations within the network as um, you know, having uh, you know, first, uh, first choice and opportunities that do arise across the network. Uh, the last piece that I, I constantly hear when I talk with teachers about, you know, what is it really uh, that, that you like that's unique about teaching at basis? They always talk about the students. Um, the students we have are very motivated. They want to learn. They want to excel. Uh, when teachers have student hours, the students come. They want to participate. They just want to soak in more information, insights from the teachers. And uh, they really have some great relationships that we do see. In terms of um, when we think about teaching uh, internationally, teaching abroad, um, what is unique about China? Why China? Uh, one of the things we've seen is a great, convenient, modern living. Um, the cities are super modern, cutting edge, tech, uh, cutting edge technology that's there. Uh, things are very uh, simple um, and easy uh, to handle in terms of transportation shopping, restaurants, everything is, uh, is handled uh, very simply. Um, it's a very safe environment uh, that we constantly hear from, uh, from our teachers. Um, also, working in China, it's an environment where teachers are deeply valued. Um, education is, uh, is, is, is prized, and being in an environment where you're appreciated, respected, well-regarded is something that um, teachers really appreciate in terms of being there in China. Of course, one of the other things is really experiencing a new culture. Um, the culture within China is, is um, you know, a result of thousands of years of culture that has developed. They're very proud of their heritage, proud of the values that have uh, you know, brought China to where it is now, combined with uh, the innovation that we do see at this point. It's uh, really a, a, an exceptional time to be a part of China with as, as things are really making that transition holding on to those cultural deep values while pursuing new innovative um, uh, uh, you know, future for the students and, and the country as a whole. One of the things that we do see in um, the mission of Basis International Schools is really providing a, an exceptional uh, education uh, with the curriculum that we do have. And one of the things that we're really focused on is um, teaching and faculty mentorship. Uh, we really have a focus on, on driving some great professional development in our teachers to drive the outcomes that we're looking for. Students with great capabilities, international perspectives, critical thinking, proficiency, problem solving, like we talked about before, and setting them up to really be future leaders within their academic professional pursuits. Something that we really do strive for in uh, all of these pieces or something that's very important to us as we do continue to build our schools. Some things that uh, I think are important to be aware of and considering an opportunity with BASIS. Um, you know, the schools that we do have, uh, they do have mostly local students. What this means is that English is a second language for most of these students. So as you consider uh, teaching, really understanding how to incorporate aspects of um, you know, ESL uh, components into lessons, understanding how to uh, teach the content, uh, high level content to individuals that are still learning vocabulary and aspects of English is something that's really important in determining whether it be a fit for you. Um, we're also looking for individuals that have a great amount of flexibility. Um, some of the schools are newer and they're growing rapidly. That means that what the school looks like in its first year could be very different than what it looks like in its second year. And that being the case, having the ability to have the flexibility of, of you know, working within some of that change, it's a dynamic environment. Um, people will be, uh, you know, tapped to take on additional responsibilities or, or, or new perspectives. And having that flexibility to step in and really make a difference, especially in, uh, you know, as part of a founding faculty, will be really important. So having that flexibility and desire to really make an impact is, is really important for us. Lastly, anybody that has uh, accompanying students, um, something to be aware of is, again, because the curriculum is, it's accelerated, it's, um, it is rigorous, ensuring that your student is really prepared for a basis education is really important to us. As you look for an opportunity, 
when you have family going internationally, uh, it's not just a matter of a, an opportunity being the right fit for you and your career. It needs to be the right situation for your family as well. And with some of the rigor that we do have, we just want to make sure that it's the best fit for uh, family members that would be accompanying the teacher. So something that's kind of important for us to uh, make sure that you're aware of. All right. Well, with uh, some of that intro on uh, the group as a whole, we want to speak to this school in particular. So um, Dr. Carol Kelly, we'll uh, turn it over to you to talk a little bit about your school. Thanks, Tim. That was a uh, outstanding uh, introduction to BASIS, and uh, you just did a great job of giving, I think, participants an overview of just the incredible network they're going to be in. So a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in education for, you know, over 25 years. Uh, I've started as a chemistry and math teacher. Um, I've been in positions uh, in leadership, uh, anything from a grade level lead to department chair to the head of an upper school, an associate head of school, and then head of school. And I've been in the head of school role for about 10 years now and just absolutely love it. So I'm an educator through and through. I'm very teacher-centered. Um, I will continue to teach in my, in my role as head, which is very exciting to me. And so, you know, that's a little bit more about me. And, you know, on the, on the personal side, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I have two children. My Son O'Neill is in second grade and my daughter Kaya is in pre-K two. So speaking to Tim's point about just the rigor and acceleration, I do want you to know that having children and bring them, you can do it. It is an environment that they will feel supported, but you do need to keep in mind that yes, it is rigorous, but um, I think all of us as parents want our children exposed to an incredible education that prepares them for uh, higher education. So. Tim, if you want to move to the next slide, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, BASIS and why China. So I chose this particular opportunity. Uh, number one, uh, going overseas has been a goal of, of my wife and I for a very long time. My, my wife is Korean American, our children are biracial, and it's something that we've always wanted to expose them to. But I don't know, like many of you, the timing is never right. It's a huge commitment to want to go overseas and the logistics of it. And timing was never right until this opportunity really kind of fell into my lap. And, uh, you know, some, some people I know in the industry talked to me about basis. And I was just so impressed with the curriculum and just the network of schools. And China intrigued me because, I mean, Tim did a great job. He hit on everything. This country is absolutely amazing. It is, it is so cutting edge. It is so forward thinking. And candidly, I, I don't think uh, the media covers it correctly. It is such a wonderful place to be. It's such a wonderful country. And that is one of the reasons I picked it. Specifically, Chengdu, even though that may not be on people's radar as a city, it's a mega city. It's over 15 million people. It's huge, but it's also located in a region that there's a lot of outdoor activities. There's climbing, there's hiking. It's a very, uh, it's a very laid back city, if that makes sense. It is, the culture there is outstanding. And if you know the uh, Sichuan province, you know Sichuan food, it's got incredible food there. So, and I just want to pause real quick and, and look at this campus. It is stunning. It is two city blocks. And if you look to kind of the, what I call the north, the top of the rendering, that is all of the, the housing for teachers, the dormitories. And then if you kind of move to the south, that is the academic, uh, that, those are the academic areas where the international program will be and where the bilingual program will be. The one thing I've, I've been asked by candidates is, well, are they building it all at once? Yes, they are building that entire campus is under construction. If you've seen the videos, there are 700 workers per shift doing three shifts a day. So basically 24 hours a day to get this done. And my general manager, Jane Lee has told me that uh, they're confident there won't be any delays and we'll, we'll be opening school in, in September. So anyways, that's just a little bit about, you know, me, the school and, and Tim, if you wanna to go to the next slide and I can hit a little bit more on, you know, just the curriculum and, and the, the two programs. So I've been asked a lot of, you know, is it, is, it, is it two schools on one campus? And my answer is no, it's two programs on one campus. We have an international component and we have the bilingual component. The international component will, as Tim said, it will have local students 
A lot of times they're dual passport holders. It will also have expat children. My children would be in the international program. And then on the bilingual side, it will be local students as well, but there will be components that we will add in from the Chinese national curriculum. The teachers that come on board will be working within both programs, not both schools. I wanna make sure people understand it is one, it is one school with two programs and we are going to be working in both of them. So I can get more specific if you're interested, but it really the curriculum, the basis curriculum stays the same. We just have to meet some of the necessary steps for the Chinese national curriculum on the bilingual side. These schedules will both be a five day schedule. Um, you, will, you will be able to work in both areas. So from a, from a professional standpoint, to say that you've worked in both a bilingual and international school, it's something that, you know, I don't want you to go anywhere if you come on board with me, but from a resume building standpoint, it's excellent to have that on your resume that you understand both programs and that you've been able to teach in both of them as well. So what you're seeing here is essentially kind of the main view of the campus. The smaller building um, in the view is going to be the admissions building, and that will be, uh, you know, really where students uh, come in and parents to get an introduction to the school. And then behind it is the administration building. You see that walkway that's going across that goes to the other side of the campus. And again, I don't know if you can understand the scale. When we get to the construction photos, I'll try to point out that just the size of this campus, I mean, it, it's similar to a small college. And it's just something that I, I think if you come on board, it, just to be so proud to be walking on this campus and educating children here, I, I just think it's something that um, I don't even think I'm prepared for. So, uh, you know, I, I think all of you that would be coming on, I, I just... I think it's going to be shock and awe every day for, for the first year, if, if not more. So Tim, if you want to move on and I can walk through a little bit more of some of the other renderings. Again, this is looking at the admissions building and what you will discover about China and construction is that what they show on these renderings is what will be there. And my experience sometimes with renderings in the United States is what you see is sometimes not what you get because you know you have to uh, value engineer things out or VE them out. China respects education and teachers and the institution of schools so much that it really you're, you're getting something that really shows the value. And this is exactly what we're going to see on campus as you are walking to your classroom. Uh, real quick, I guess, is, as we're here, um, I do want people to know that in year one, we're opening with uh, pre-K one through ninth grade, and we'll have 550 kids approximately on campus. And then in subsequent years, as we add 10, 11, and 12, the end enrollment for the Chengdu campus will be about 2,000 students. So you'll be working in a, in a large school, but it's one that my vision of, my vision is that we are a community of learners that we're there together to one, work as a team. I run a very flat organizational structure. I have an open door policy. All of my leadership team will as well that we are in it together. I just happen to have a different job than you and, and I value all of you and I can't do any of this without an incredible team. And what you're seeing here is looking at some of the athletic facilities, that building that's kind of centered is going to be the gymnasium, the pool will be in there. There's actually two pools. There's one for the younger children, and then there's a seven lane lap uh, pool that will be in there as well. On top of that uh, building will be a soccer pitch. Uh, so we're utilizing the space very well. To the left of that is the international uh, program. So that will be grades you know, one through 12, but that building goes on for quite a ways past that. And then if you look kind of in the distance on the right-hand side, that is the bilingual high school that will be there. But you can see that as far as spaces for children, we're going to have plenty of that. Tim, if you want to move to the next one and I can walk them through. So, you know, I've, I've had questions from candidates, you know, what will be the housing like on campus? They're going to be extremely nice apartments that are going to be on campus, anything from singles to doubles to triples, you know, just depending on your circumstances and your family. I've had people ask, you know, can you live off campus? Yes, you can. Uh, I would love for as many faculty to be on campus because I just think that's where the culture is really going to be built. But I completely understand if off campus is a better fit. And especially if you have a pet um, in China, you cannot have pets on campus. And so you, you'll, you know, you can have a nice place off campus. 
The benefit packages for the expats is very generous. So you will be able to find a very nice place to live um, just, just near the school to do that. Tim, let's do the, uh, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so here, here's some of the construction pictures. That is Jane Lee that I'm standing with in that top left. And if you move down the, the one right below it, and I, I don't know if you can zoom in, but those, those cranes in the background, that is not another construction site. That is our school. And so you're talking about, and I don't know the square acres or hectares to talk in a, you know, the metric system. It is just, it's incredible. And so all of you as candidates and, you know, potentially coming on as teachers, you're going to have a campus that's just going to have a lot that you'll be able to do on campus right next to the school. So if you, you know, if you were to go over past those cranes, there's a beautiful park right next to the school. Um, it has running and walking paths you can go on. It has play areas. And then if you watch some of the videos that uh, Tim and his team have been putting on social media, there's, a, a, there's another park about 10 minutes away from the school that has restaurants, multiple play areas, kayaking. Uh, you know, it's just, it's incredible. There's a high ropes course there. There's actually a ski hill, a simulated ski hill that you can go down as well that I don't think made any of the videos. I, I think I missed that one, but it, it's just incredible. So the area around the school also is in the center of massive research facilities that are being built or have been built. So if you're familiar with Scripps Lab out of Chicago, they're building a site right near the school. There's going to be other research centers. So I, I want you to know I value all of the disciplines, but as a math science guy, I am absolutely thrilled to try and partner with these institutions and to get our students exposed to some authentic research occurring in, in these institutions. And also I'd love for scientists to come over to our school talk with students, be able to, to really talk to them about the next step of that. And then for the other disciplines, I mean, just think of the technical writing that we could get into. Think of some of the things that we could really expose them to. And then the other aspect is that there's going to be scientists from all over the world working there. So we're going to have you know, children that are in the international program that could be from Korea or Japan, uh, United States, you know, UK, Australia, so it's just really, I think, an international uh, area that we're going to be in. And if you know anything about China, when they build, they build. And so the area around the school will have shops, it will have restaurants, there will be all sorts of things that you can do to be able to, you know, walk from school or, you know, get in a DD and head downtown and, and you know, really get exposed to a, a large city, a, a large city and the, and the culture. So I, I'm going to probably have Tim chime in a little bit here, but you know Chengdu, you know if it's not on if it's not on your radar, it needs to be. You need to do some research. I mean, it has the largest freestanding building in the world on campus. I actually, or not on campus, in the city, and I was able to stay there. And I can't even explain to you how large this place is. It has a ice skating rink. It has shopping. It has a indoor water park. It's just incredible. And the area around just Chengdu is just filled with a lot of history. Um, if you want to get that big city feel, you can get it. Um, but you're going to just discover that the people in Chengdu are friendly. They, they, they love us expats. You, and even if there's a language barrier, you're going to be able to get around it through, you know, Google Translate or some of the other things. They work with you. And I just found them to be just, you know, just such a, it's such a great community. And I'm thrilled to be able to, to, eventually move there. I've been up there and visited. Um, I'm currently in Shenzhen, but uh, my family and I, are, I cannot wait to get up there and, and move. So Tim, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Well, I think in terms of Chengdu, uh, I think you know, it's, it's, in the, it's the capital of the Sichuan province. So everybody thinks of the pandas. It's where the pandas are from. Um, certainly known for uh, food, the cuisine uh, that, that is there is, is amazing. Uh, might be a little bit more on the spicy side for, uh, for some people. But um, great place to be. And uh, again, um, part of a lot of things you'll see there, like Dr. Kelly had mentioned, yeah, outdoor activities. There's uh, nearby, one of my favorite places is uh, Mount Ume, uh, one of the uh, uh, three sacred Buddhist uh, mountains in, uh, in China. Beautiful area, beautiful place to be. You have kind of the, the, that mix of great outdoor activities, um, large city, yeah, great mix there. So great place. Great. Uh, so 
if we move to the next slide and, 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 and any of you that are on and have questions or want more detail, we can certainly provide that for you in, in uh, subsequent follow-ups. All right, teachers, I can't express how much I value uh, the profession of teaching and what all of you do to make sure children are in the best possible environment and ready for that next stage of their life. So what I'm looking for in teachers that want to come to Chengdu is, is one, you have to be a little crazy. We're opening a brand new school. It is being built. Um, and if that excites you like it does me, then, then okay, you need, to, you need to apply. It's something that is just, I don't think many people in their career can say they're part of a founding faculty and that you get to open a school. And so that, I think that is you know, checkbox number one. If that excites you, then you're in the right spot. I'm also looking for people that are collaborative. Uh, I, I, I really believe that we have to work as a team. We need to help each other grow each and every day. And so if you're looking to just come to a school and close your door and just do your thing, I don't know if I'm the best fit for, for you as a head of school because I love coming into classrooms. I love talking with teachers. I love making sure that you're having the best possible experience. And so I want people that want to be part of a team. You know, that's how I look at any school I've been part of is that we're part of a team and we just have each different jobs to do. So, you know, th those are two of the main things. Obviously, I want depth of knowledge. I want passion for what you're doing, passion for your craft, passion for working with the children and, and, and just really just, you know, that that you're in that stage. I don't care if you're in your first year of teaching or if you're in your 30th is that you are still passionate about what you're doing. And so those are some of the things I'm looking for in the teachers to come over. And you know, if that excites you and it excites you to work with someone that's going to really try to make sure you're having the best possible experience as a teacher and provide you the things that you need, I think you're, I think you're on the right uh, webinar and um, I hope to hear from you. Some of the areas that I'm, I'm really looking for is I need early childhood, I need primary, uh, you know, math, uh, you know, e even if, um, you know, even if I don't have a position, getting to be part of this network of schools is outstanding. So if you're interested, just get with Tim and his team, and I will do everything I can to find a spot for you on my campus. But at the same time, I know the other heads of school, I know them all very well, and you'd be joining a great team. And I'd be remiss if I didn't let you know that, you know, at some point, if you even do come work for me, you're probably going to want to go to another school in the basis network just to see more of China's. And I understand that that's that's that is fine. But I do think it's important that you understand that this is a network that works together. And if that excites you that it's not just a siloed school, it is a group of schools that coordinate, that collaborate. And so if you're coming on to say teach chemistry, you're going to have a network of teachers to talk with if you're there's something in the curriculum that you need, you know, a question on or about. And so apply. And then also there's opportunities out there in the entire network as well. So Tim, I'm gonna, I, I've been talking a mile a minute, so I'm gonna slow down and, and just see if there's anything you need me to hit on that I may have may have missed so that our participants have a full picture. I think that's great. I think you really touched a lot on uh, what's going to be really important for uh, your school and uh, certainly what's important for basis. One of the things I might add is, you know, being part of a network, we also have through, uh, you know, the systems we use, um, we're able to share uh, uh, syllabi of the other teachers teaching the same course, uh, lesson plans, and you get some great ideas from really great top-notch teachers from across the network. It's not just within the, within the single school, but uh, you have access to some pretty phenomenal people across the network to uh, collaborate with in your discipline. Great. Well, I'm, I, I will, um, I think we're going to turn it over to, to Michael next, correct? Yep. So, okay, uh, so great. Mike, we're going to have Mike talk uh, a bit about some key things that are important in, uh, in uh, considering part of, uh, part of the group. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And just to kind of reiterate what Dr. Uh, Kelly and Tim were saying earlier, I think that that idea of being a part of a network is so important. Being able to collaborate with your colleagues, both there in Chengdu or elsewhere, is just one of the, the biggest benefits of working at an international school because you do get a chance to work with colleagues from all corners of the world. You get exposed to so many different ideas. Um, and so with that, for our teachers, in addition to a very generous salary, there's a lot of other components that go into the expat package for our teachers. 
Um, first off is there is, there is travel benefits. Um, when you do relocate, we provide you with some relocation reimbursement to help with uh, costs associated with that. But in addition to that reimbursement, we also we get your air fl- airfare to and from Chengdu. Um, we would ha- we would ta- take care of the visas for you and your family. Um, and then the school housing that is provided does come fully furnished. Additionally, every year, one of the big benefits of teaching internationally is the chance to travel. And BASIS does provide that um, annual return home allowance for teachers to be able to travel back to the home country. Or if they want to, they could uh, use it to travel elsewhere as well. Um, again, as Dr. Kelly stated, there we do provide you housing. And what's wonderful at Chengdu is it is right there on campus. So it's a very, very simple commute. There's a bridge that goes over the roadway there and takes you to campus every day. So it's a very simple, simple commute for all of our teachers. Um, as well as we also cover uh, health care for uh, you and your family, for you and up to uh, your spouse, the two children. And it's global coverage. So it covers you guys, not just in China, but in your home countries as well. But Chengdu, it is a center of health care. Um, the largest hospital in the world is there in Chengdu. And as I was saying, there's a lot of other biotech companies coming to that area specifically because of that health care. Um, I know, Dr. Kelly, I know you and your family have had some experience with uh, healthcare there yourselves. Absolutely. Uh, one thing to mention about the Chengdu campus is that there is a uh, large hospital and, uh, in, and they do ratings of hospitals and it's at the top rating that is right near the school. So from that standpoint, if you have children or dependent or even yourself, you know, I just want you to know that there's health there's healthcare right near the school. And as I mentioned earlier, I have two children and I think all of our immune systems are a little suppressed uh, with uh, you know, all we've been doing over the past few years. And so my daughter, my daughter had a cough that just wasn't going away. And I, I can't even explain how blown away my wife and I were with the one, the ease of making appointments. Um, if you've not been to China and you don't know what WeChat is, you soon will. WeChat runs this country. And we could make appointments through WeChat. Our insurance uh, covered everything, and the health the the healthcare provided was top notch. And I'll give you an example. So one thing I really appreciated is our daughter had this cough, and they didn't immediately go to uh, medicine. They did some other uh, they did some other treatments to help my daughter rather than just giving her you know antibiotics or something. And they really took the time to talk with my wife. They actually set up a WeChat group and checked in with my wife later. The doctor checked in with my wife later to make sure everything was going well with our daughter. So if, you, if, you, if you've heard horror stories or if you don't know what to expect, I can tell you that the coverage here and what you'll get is outstanding. Thank you very much. And, uh, sorry. Uh, so thank you very much that I think that Personal experience with it, I think, is so is so important because you get to talk with someone who's who's used the benefits and experienced it, it's just it's invaluable. Um, addition, additionally, with going overseas, it is you and your family, and so it's going to be right for everybody. And so, basis knows that, so we do provide tuition for the two children, so your children can go to school with you. Um, as well as there are some additional bonuses as well, including a ten percent retirement bonus for our teachers to use every year. Um, with teachers all around the world, we, we had to figure out a way to have everyone be able to participate. And so there's a retirement bonus for teachers to use with uh, how they will. Largely, um, our teachers here in the United States have put that into like an IRA or that type of thing. Um, additionally, at the end of your assignment, there's a, there's a completion bonus. It's a 16,000 US dollar completion bonus with then the opportunity to take advantage of kind of being part of that larger network. There's additional bonuses. Uh, for staying at the school there in Chengdu, staying for a fourth, the fifth, the sixth year, and continuing to help grow that school, as well as getting a chance to transfer to another basis school and help to expand as we grow to new areas and be founding members of the new campuses or experience life in a new area, or as well to potentially come back to teach at our member schools in the United States as well and bring that international experience with you as you transfer back here uh, home to the United States. Um, so that was kind of very kind of quick rundown of the expat pack package. And it kind of leads into us as here at basis, what are we looking for when we look for our teachers? Um, first off is we are looking for that degree of expertise. We look for teachers to really be experts in what they teach. And then us as basis allowing you to be that expert you really are. So we look for teachers, we are looking for teachers to have a degree in their subject area. 
So one of the nice is working with your colleagues in say the biology department is everyone's gonna have the degree in biology. The history teacher have the degree in history and vice versa. You're working with kind of your fellow, fellow experts in those areas. Um, additionally, there at international schools, you do need to have two years of full-time classroom teaching experience. Um, that's part of so get everyone the correct Z teaching visa to come over to China. So those are kind of some of the, the basic foundations, but most importantly it is that passion for teaching, passion for students, and passion for your subject. When, when you have that passion for your subject and the students know you have that passion for what you're teaching, it just bleeds over to them. It just makes them so excited about learning. They want to fast, foster that passion, that, that excitement. Um, as well as I know something Dr. Kelly hit on numerous times is that willingness to collaborate. Here at Basis, we, we don't want to be individual. It's not every teacher in their classroom. It's we're a, whole, we're a whole team of teachers and be able to say, you know, hey, I've got this great idea. Let me share this out. Or, hey, I'm struggling with doing this. Who can help me? And just having to really want and actively look for that collaboration is something we are really looking for. Um, additionally, is that kind of high academic standard. You know, here at Basis, we, we, we don't uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of put it lightly as we do have high academic standards. So we want the students to achieve it. And so we want the teachers to be able to help the students achieve those goals that they have by building those footholds in for them and helping them reach that, those potential that they really do have. Um, it, and all that being said, it is gonna be hard work. Our teachers are gonna be able to put a, put a lot of effort, put a lot of work, especially in a new school. And so I want teachers going in knowing that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that, that position to challenge themselves and really grow this school into something that is gonna be unique to you and to your students at that school. Um, and again, it's, it all comes back to students. We can, if we can engage those students, that is so, so important because and it's, we ask us guys, a lot of teachers, we ask a lot of the students and we've got to get them to do it because they want to. If we can get them to learn because they want to, that makes all the difference in the world. And teachers that can really engage those young minds to really become curious and become uh, excited what they're learning. Um, and then last off is just, there are some current visa restrictions that unfortunately kind of everywhere around the world is dealing with. And so that's led to some more restrictions that are changing day to day. And so it is kind of leading to some questions and some kind of curiosity about how it's going to change. And we, can, we know what it's like now, but we know what it's like going to be in six months where we're still trying to figure that out. And so that flexibility, I guess, that we really focus on is how we find those best teachers and bring those patients from all corners of the world together, kind of with still meeting all those visa requirements that, we, that China's have to get you the correct Z teaching visa to come over. Um, and then in addition to kind of the school there in Chengdu, we are continuing to grow. We have schools opening in numerous places across China, including Beijing and Shanghai and Tianjin. Um, as well as our bilingual schools. Uh, Dr. Kelly's gonna be leading our second bilingual school with our network, and that's gonna continue to be a growth point as well. We're adding a bilingual school in Hangzhou. We're adding a bilingual school in Longzhou. So being able to kind of help grow and develop that kind of model, so it's gonna be very exciting. Great, thanks Mike, appreciate you sharing that. So uh, to see some additional insights about what it's like to be a part of Basis International Schools, what it's like to work at our um, uh, the different campuses and the different cities, we'd encourage you to uh, you know follow and, and see some of what we share out across our social channels. Um, we do have um, you know a blog where teachers have shared some of their experiences. Um, we also uh, you know share out some of the uh, the events and activities at the schools uh, across social channels like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, some of the videos on our YouTube channel. And um, one of the things you can do is you can join the interest list. You can see the link there. There's also a link on our career page, uh, top um, uh, website there. Um, insights on the different schools. We post all of the immediately open positions um, right there on our career site. So please uh, take a look there. And uh, you can always see lots of information, insights about the schools across some of our channels. So uh, we come to a uh, Q&A portion of our uh, uh, the conversation today. Um, Mike, I know you've been tracking some of the questions that have been coming in. Do you want to maybe uh, run through some of the yeah. initial questions? Yeah, absolutely. 
Sorry, absolutely. And so I guess uh, kind of one of the questions we got is, so there in Chengdu, we do have an international school and a bilingual school. Um, can we go over kind of some of the differences between those two models? Sure, you, you can hear me okay? Yeah, the, um, essentially the two programs will, will be working together. So on the, on the international side, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a, a straight approach that looks like any other basis international school. Bilingual side, there's going to be things that we have to meet for the Chinese national curriculum such as they need more PE. That is something that's been mandated. There's going to be uh, more Chinese classes for uh, language and history and those aspects of things. But from an expat standpoint, if you're hired to do grade two or grade five, or you're doing middle school math, you're going to be doing the basis curriculum. A lot of those things that uh, you will not have to worry about, those are things I will have to worry about and my leadership team will worry about. So you will come and you will teach and you will be utilizing your expertise in that. Um, and then if there are things that we have to adjust, we'll obviously work with you all on that. But uh, you, you'll be coming over and teaching the, the basis curriculum. Great. Thanks, Dr. Kelly. Thank you. So another question we got is, um, well, someone want to know if we could go over the two teacher model in the elementary school side. Sure. I can give you my vision. And I, I think it's very consistent with uh, what, how basis would view it is that you have your subject expert teacher, um, whereas in base of China, that's going to be an expat. So you are the person that's going to come over and you are going to be viewed as that subject expert teacher. The LET or the learning enhancement teacher is going to be a Chinese national, Chinese citizen. Uh, they are coming from the best normal schools or education schools um, in China. And they will be working with you as the SET. And my view is it's a co-teaching model. I would like the SET and LET to be on the same uh, footing, the same level ground. Obviously the SET is going to perhaps have depth of knowledge in areas where the LET doesn't, but that's where the learning enhancement teacher can enhance that learning and work with you. So that, that is my view of it. Um, essentially through grade five, there will be LETs and then in middle and high, there, there will be support if there are some language uh, barriers or if there's things that need, you know, maybe explanation in Chinese, but the level of English proficiency Generally, you don't you don't need that type of support because the students speak fluent English. Thank you. Um, and guys, kind of with that as well, what's the maximum class size for our, for our students and our teachers? Twenty five students. Oh, so, so, um, so, how many students are in a, are in a class at the maximum? It'd be twenty five. So nice, good um, size. With basis using that AP curriculum, what about teachers that have experience in IB, British, or other types of curriculum? Well, I'll speak for myself. I come from a strong IB background. I've been part of IB schools for 20 years, and I think it, I think it adds to the uh, basically the depth that you have. Uh, so if you know another curriculum well, you, you're going to be fine. You're going to come over. You're going to get trained in the AP approach to uh, that particular subject. But I actually think it's great if you have a background in some of the other curriculums that are being you know, given around the world. So if you're part of an IB or British, that is not something that's going to be a you know, knock against you. I value that. And we would just make sure that you get the appropriate training uh, in the AP program. Something that, that I might add to that also is, you know, the basis curriculum is essentially a curriculum that's established taking you know, great parts from different curricula. Um, we love the A-levels that we see in some of the British curriculum. We love uh, some of the, uh, the science approach you see in Asia and Eastern European uh, curricula. Um, so, so the curriculum has, has actually been you know, put together by taking great parts of different curricula. And one of the things that we do see is you know, teachers coming from you know, different great um, you know, curricula around the world are able to contribute in unique ways. And you know, by, by assembling a, a group of uh, faculty, that has these different strengths, you're actually able to learn from different people and really enhance your own practice and add to skills that you bring to the table in addition to sharing those with others as well. So we really enjoy and like the diversity of uh, people coming from different areas and different, with, with different strengths. I agree. Um, 
So I guess what are some of the other uh, PD opportunities we have for teachers here at Basis? Well, the, uh, obviously the pandemic has thrown a wrench in some of the, the, the things we may be traveling to and doing um, you know, in, in, in other areas of the world or, or other countries. But what I can tell you is that there is a concerted approach to both in-house and out-of-house training. And you get a lot of PD within the school. Um, all of you that would be coming on as new teachers, there is what's called a summer institute where you would get a lot of training on being part of the basis school in Chengdu, along with being part of the basis network. There's actually going to be some additional training because we're opening the school. And then there's collaboration that occurs between schools through the network. Uh, professional learning communities is something that I'm a big believer in. So those will be established. And then obviously there's going to be training that occurs uh, that, that come down from what's called the CHAS office. So that's the chief executive head of school office that there will be trainings that will uh, will come from there that will be administered across the school. So if you're looking to grow as a teacher, uh, the base network uh, certainly will make sure that that occurs for you. Um, and so with that, as well as teachers look to move up, move up and advance their careers, um, what are some opportunities that teachers may have to move up and grow their careers professionally? You know, in basis, uh, in the basis network, the sky's the limit. So I can tell you that I'm, I'm bringing over about 12 or 13 uh, basis teachers from other schools within the China network. And all of them are, are, all of them are stepping into basically promoted roles. So some are chairs moving into vice head of division. Uh, some are teachers moving into dean's roles. Um, you know, some are moving into uh, divisional leadership. So if you're looking to grow and, you know, let's just say you're on this call and, you know, you, you someday want to be ahead of school, I can't guarantee it will happen, but I, I certainly can tell you that there's room for growth here and that if you want to grow as an administrator, we have a very good system in place to make sure that you can take those additional steps as you move up in your career. Perfect. And um, kind of another question is, what is the approximate start date for uh, teachers coming over to China this year looking like it's going to be? I really would like teachers to be coming in July. Uh, and the reason why is that we don't know what will happen with quarantine. Uh, it, you know, it, I'm hoping at some point that that's reduced, you know, from, you know, depending on the province, it can be sometimes three weeks, it can be two weeks, it could be one week. So if you get here in July, it will, it'll, it'll, one, it will allow us to make sure the quarantine doesn't impact the start of school. It also will allow that you still can get some of the PD through the Summer Institute. Um, so that's, that's what I'd be looking for. But obviously, that is also dictated by when visas are issued and flights can be made. But that's why we're working really hard to get positions filled now so we can get that process going. One, one thing that I might just add to that real quickly is, um, you know, our, our contracts do go from July through June. So those individuals, as you do come in uh, in July, historically, it's been about, you know, mid-July, we have people come in, but you are paid for that full month. And so as you arrive, you do have some, uh, you know, provide some, some cash up front, uh, get settled in, get some initial supplies taken care of. Um, and then, you know, the monthly salary is, is provided, um, uh, the remainder is provided there towards the end of the month. Um, so you do get that full months of salaries. You do come in to help with some settling costs as well. Thank you. And um, with us opening the school grades pre-K through nine, um, where are we going to be adding in grades 10, 11, and 12? We'd be adding uh, it, just in the subsequent years. Is that what you meant, Michael? Is, is it, I mean, as you know, so in two, 2022, we opened through ninth grade. And then the following year, we'd add 10th grade. Following year, we'd add 11th grade. Um, and really, we're doing that because the college counseling piece is so important that it, it begins really in eighth grade. So we're comfortable with eighth and ninth grade starting, but we got to make sure that they're ready. So each year we'll continue to add a grade level and, and, and continue from there. So it'll take, what, I guess three or four years to get to grade 12 and graduate our first class. Thank you. Um, and with uh, getting the kids prepared for those uh, higher grade levels, what kind of support structures are there for students to make sure the students are ready for this uh, rigorous curriculum to help them uh, kind of achieve those goals? Well, you have one at first and foremost, you have phenomenal teachers that are going to, you know, make sure those students are getting 
the curriculum and you know the the things they need to be successful. We have counselors on staff. We have deans on staff. We have uh, we have ELL teachers on staff that will assist. And so there's a lot of support that will be given to these students. But again, it's a rigorous curriculum. So you need to understand that as you come into it as a, as a student and as a family. Um, and as one last question on the students as well is, so with teaching both uh, English and Mandarin, are, are there be other additional languages taught at the school as well? Currently, um, right now, we're just going to have Mandarin and English in the school. Um, I know there are uh, there are other schools that may add other languages. I'm not opposed to that, but for for the start of our school, we'll have Mandarin and English that will be in the school. Um, and it's one final logistical question is so with the new Chinese tax law coming into effect, effect next year, um, what's being looked at to see kind of how that's going to play out? I have an answer for you guys, and I think uh, you'll be very happy with the answer. Uh, Dr. Reeford, uh, if you don't know that name, um, panelist, he's the, he's the chief executive head of school, and he's been working with uh, the basis uh, leadership. And the answer is that we haven't heard back from the tax bureau on exactly what, um, what it will look like for expats, but he just sent an email yesterday to all of us uh, heads of school and head of operations that basis will cover any tax impact and so your take-home pay will not be will not be impacted or diminished by the new tax law and i think we're one of the first network of schools to say that in china that we will make sure that there's no impact to a, a expat salary that's great thank you um, and then uh, kind of, I guess, kind of with that as well, kind of where do teachers need to go to find more information about the positions or where to apply? Kind of how can people submit their interest in the school there in Chengdu or elsewhere? I would, you know, I know, I know a lot of people are, um, are finding me on LinkedIn and, and I, I, that's great. I'm happy to interact. But I think going through uh, Tim and, and you, Michael, is a great step because then you get exposure to the whole network. So I think going through the two of you is the key. And, and Tim, I don't, I don't know if you needed, wanted to say something on that point too. Yeah, I think a couple of things. Maybe I'll just you know back up to provide some uh, some info. Best place to go is to the career site. You know, as you apply to positions directly with us, as Dr. Kelly mentioned, that comes into uh, to our recruiting team, and we're able to take a look at an individual's application. And let's say, for example, they apply for a position at uh, one particular school that. Um, you know, maybe uh, that spot is uh, somebody's to the finish line on that one. Um, we can get you in queue for a position at one of the other schools as well. So um, first step would absolutely be to uh, apply to positions with us directly through the career site. It's jobs.basisinternationalschools.com. And then, of course, you know, join the interest list. We do send out updates of happenings, events, developments across the schools. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we'll be sending out lists of uh, you know, new openings that do come up. Um, there will be things that uh, that may open up as you progress through the year. Um, renew contracts, we have additional enrollment, and add positions to uh, to the schools. So please feel free to uh, to join the interest list as well. And again, uh, you know, by following us on social, you'll see a lot of insights about what the experience is like for our teachers. Uh, things that are happening at the schools, and, uh, and a great place to get to know uh, more of what's going on, and a good place to start in terms of uh, beginning the application process. Yeah, and um, I just kind of continuing on with that is we had some questions about specific positions there in Chengdu, and that's what will be uh, be always listed first is on that school website is and on the basis careers website. So that's the first place that we'll, we'll post all the positions we have, both for Chengdu and all, as well as schools across the network as well. Um, and I think that is it. Okay. Looks like that uh, covers the uh, the questions that we do have. Again, we appreciate everybody for joining us. Dr. Kelly, thank you for joining and sharing the insights about your school. I'm really excited about the school and uh, getting a chance to see uh, what's developing there as we uh, we open up the school in, in Chengdu. So um, again, feel free to uh, to follow us, apply to positions at jobs at basisinternationalschools.com. Um, take a look at our blog. We do uh, update that uh, throughout the week with uh, new insights that do come up. And that we will be posting additional enhancements as uh, Dr. Kelly visits his site and uh, shares the construction uh, progress. And we look forward to having that uh, um, you know, finished up as we get towards the summer with uh, opening up for the next school year. So again, 
everybody, thank you for your time and joining us and um, look forward to being in touch. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Kim.